Shite. Mm. Hi, I'm Stella. And I'm Tarrant. And this is Meeple University's How to Play Chai. As you can see, we enjoy very much our chai tea. We have our friends over drinking chai tea and playing the board game chai. At the time that we're filming this How to Play video, chai is launching soon on Kickstarter. So some of the art and components may not be final as we're using a prototype, but of course do check it out on Kickstarter if you're interested in what you see. And stay tuned until the end of video because we have someone special. We have the designers, Connie and Daniel, that will give you some tips and strategy how to win the game. Now let's learn how to play. In Chai, two to five players play the role of tea vendors, attempting to earn the most money and points through satisfied customers over five rounds of play. During the game, players will collect or purchase tea ingredients, complete customers' tea orders, and collect tips in order to complete their objectives. After five rounds, the player who has collected the most money and points wins the game. To set up the game, each player takes a tea house board, a reference card, and the six tea tokens which match his or her player board. The player takes the eight customer cards in his or her colour, shuffles them up, keeps one as a reserved customer, and then deals one card face up into the general customer pool. Then, all of the remaining customer cards in player colours are shuffled together, and two more are dealt into the general customer pool, for a total of two more than the number of players in the game. Customer cards and base T tokens in non-player colours are not used during the game. Choose a first player, give that player one coin, and all other players two coins. Place the market and pantry boards into the centre of the table. To set up the market board, take the 72 flavour tiles into a bag, shuffle them up, and deal 18 tiles onto the board in these three rows of six. On the pantry board, take one copy of each of the five additive tokens, and place them onto the five spaces on the board. Then take the rest of the additive tokens and keep them in this bag. Shuffle the ability cards and then play three of them face up into the main play area, leaving the others next to them. Place a number of teacups onto the table equal to the number of players. Shuffle up the six tip tokens and place one next to each of the teacups. Finally, Take the thermometer, which is your round marker, set it to the lowest level, and place it to keep track of which round you're in. You're now ready to play. On each player's turn, he or she must choose one of the three areas on the table to visit, the market, the pantry, or the customer and action area, and then perform actions in that location. After that, the player may optionally fulfill one customer order. This occurs at the end of the player's turn. Then play passes to the next player clockwise who does likewise, and so on until the game is over. In order to visit the market, the player first immediately takes three coins from the bank. Then the player may spend this money, as well as any other money that he or she has collected through the game, on buying flavour tiles from the market. The player must spend at least one coin on flavour tiles. The player cannot simply come to this location and take the three coins. To purchase flavour tiles, the player first chooses which tiles to buy. This can be a single tile, or it can be a cluster of tiles of the same type, which are orthogonally adjacent to each other. However, when buying tiles which are in a cluster, the player must buy the entire cluster. It is not allowed for a player to break a cluster of matching tiles up. The player then takes the tile or tiles into his or her collection and pays the cost, which for the entire cluster of tiles is equal to the cost of the highest single tile. So buying this single tile would cost one, buying this single tile would cost two, but buying this cluster of three tiles would cost three, because this one is in the three column. After a player has purchased a tile or tiles from the market, all of the tiles slide to the left in their existing rows, 
and the space which is left is not immediately refilled. The player then has the opportunity to buy further tiles from the market with the costs based on how they're now laid out. So, with the board laid out like this, the player could now buy all four of these for a total cost of two coins. These are added to the player's collection and the tiles are slid to the left once again. Players may continue making purchases in this way until they no longer wish to buy any flavour tiles or until they are out of money. Then, once you've completed your action, refill the market from the bag. Each player has room for only 12 flavour tiles on his or her player board, and if the player ever purchases above 12, he or she must discard back down to 12. The second location is the pantry, and when a player visits the pantry, he or she may take three additive tiles in any combination from out of the pantry and blindly out of the additive bag. Unlike at the flavour tile market, players do not need to pay anything to collect additives. Then, after you've completed your actions, refill the additive market from the bag. Prior to taking the pantry action, a player may pay one coin in order to discard all of the tiles from the pantry, putting them back in the bag, and reshuffle them to draw five new ones before choosing. A player has space for only six additive tiles on his or her player board, and if he or she ever collects above six, must discard back down to six. The third location that a player can visit is the customer pool and bonus action area. When a player goes to this location, he or she takes two actions. Firstly, reserves a customer either from the face-up display or from the top of the deck by taking the customer card and placing it into his or her tea house. Any empty spaces are refilled. From this point forward, only the player who has reserved that customer may complete that order. Players may not have more than three unfulfilled reserved customers at any given time and cannot reserve another customer if he or she already has three. Then, the player takes one of the three bonus actions from this face-up display. These are described with icons and the rulebook will explain in words what these all do. Then, the player chooses one of the three bonus actions from this face-up display and takes that action. These are all depicted with icons and are described with text in the rulebook. For example, this one lets the player fulfill a customer order this round with one fewer pantry item. For example, this one allows a player to fulfill an order with one fewer pantry item this round, and this one allows a player to reset a certain type of flavour tile in the market. So, in summary, on each turn you will do one of these three actions. Visit the market where you spend money to gain flavour tiles, visit the pantry where you can take pantry items for free, or visit the customer area to reserve one customer and use one free ability. Then, you may optionally fulfill one order, and that is what we'll talk about next. When fulfilling a customer order, the player may choose any customer from the face-up customer pool or from his or her reserved customers. The player then matches up all of the flavour tiles or additive tiles that that customer wants, and must also provide the base T type. This is from these tokens that you gain at the start of the game. If the customer matches your colour, then that token will simply come from your player board. However, if the customer that you're resolving does not match your colour, then you will need to buy this base T token from the player who matches that colour, at a cost of one coin. This is a non-optional sale for the player who has that colour. If you want that T token, you will be able to buy it for one coin. Note that there are eight customers of each colour in the deck, but only six base T tokens of each colour, and so as these get scarce towards the end of the game, it may be more competitive to get them. Then, choose any one of the teacups for which the tip token has not yet been flipped. Empty all of your ingredients into that teacup, placing the customer underneath your tea house board. This is the number of victory points that that customer will be worth at the end of the game. Then flip the tip token and immediately take that much money. Tip tokens range between one and three dollars. 
if the order that you fulfilled came from the main customer pool, then immediately replace that customer in the pool from the top of the deck. Once the final tip has been revealed in any given round, the round is over. And to set up for the next round, proceed with the following steps. Raise the round marker to the next number on the thermometer. Retrieve all of the tip markers, shuffle them up with the ones that weren't used, and then deal a new tip marker out for each of the cups. Then the player who is next in turn order reveals the next bonus ability card and then chooses one of the three existing ones to cover over. This will give a slightly different set of bonus abilities that will be available for the next round. Play then proceeds with the next player in turn order with all players retaining their existing ingredients and customers and money. Note that although there is one teacup per player in the game, this doesn't necessarily mean that each player will complete one order in each round, as a player completing low value orders will be able to complete a higher number than a player completing high value orders. The end of the game is triggered when the final tip is flipped in the fifth round of the game. Play continues until all players have had the same number of turns. And so while players may still complete orders in the final little phase of the game, they will not gain any additional tips, but will still get the victory points. Then proceed to end game scoring. To determine your final score, add up the number of victory points shown on each order that you've completed. To that, add the amount of money you have left over, and add one point for each different type of base T token that you have completed on an order during the game, in this case three. Skip this last step in a two-player game. The player with the highest score wins, and in the event of a tie, the player who completed the fewest total orders wins. If still tied, whoever has the most money wins, and if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play chai. Karen, you haven't even finished your chai tea yet. Yes, that's true. We better make the video go a couple more minutes. That's right. We have now special guests, Daniel and Connie, who will give you some tips and strategy on how to win the game. Hey everyone, it's Dan and Connie and we're here to give you some quick strategic tips on how to play Chai. After over 300 play tests, we found that the point spread at the end is usually about 5 to 10 points. We also found that fulfilling cards is always key to winning. So at the beginning, it might be best to go for some of the bigger victory point cards as you have more time to fulfill them. But you need to watch the round marker because at the end you really need to just try to complete those big cards and go for the little ones if you can. Yeah. Uh, looking at the market board, let's say you wanted something in the silver category. It might be easier for you to check if you could buy something in the copper category because things slide and then you could buy both for the same price. Um, Connie and I played a game and <laughs> I bought a couple of ginger, but it set her up for a big four lemon combo, so always watch out for what your opponent is going for. And you're already in the market, so you're there, you might as well buy more if you can, um, while remembering that money is victory points. So don't spend it all, but if you're fulfilling a card, look to see what you can fulfill the next turn. Next we have the pantry area. Um, this is a place where you can be quite strategic. So, you can restock the pantry for one copper. Sometimes it is the best move, even though it may seem expensive. So for example, if there were five things I didn't want, I can pay that copper, get another five, and if I still don't like it, I can draw three blind items out of the bag. The other thing about the pantry is you can actually use it to block other people from fulfilling their contracts. So. If I have already drawn one item, I can look at the open customer pool and see what Daniel might need and take two of those items so that he can't go on his turn and fulfill his card. Yeah, and the last thing you could do on your turn is actually just reserve a customer. You can have up to three in your tea house, so be strategic with that. Uh, we found that it's actually the least played um, of the three things that you can do on your turn, but it's probably one of the most strategic based on the situation. After a few plays, we found players, they do a lot more abilities because they're more familiar in how they can use them. Uh, specifically, you might want to get a few more coins or make sure that your 
a fulfilled customer will give you a three uh, gold tip, that sort of thing. Um, it's also really important to make sure that, like, let's say if Connie's going for a big card, I could actually just reserve that quickly. Um, it's kind of an opportunity cost for me, but at the same time I'm gaining points by making sure that she doesn't gain points. If you play the solo rules, make sure you're always looking ahead so you can see um, what's going to come up in the future turns. And if you play the co-op, make sure that you're reserving some of the bigger cards so that the Chaiwala can't get yeah. to it first. Yeah, and that's about it, um, at least for the base rules set. If you are playing the advanced, it's also a bit situational, so if uh, Connie and I were playing, I would want to make sure that I at least control one of the teacups. Maybe I can control two because friendly ties give you points as well. Uh, if we're doing a four to five play uh, through, you might have the ability to actually control two cups or a little bit more. So you're kind of you know figuring things out as it goes. But thank you so much for listening to our quick uh, strategic tips, and we hope that you enjoy the wonderful world of chai. Thanks, Daniel and Connie, for the tips. Now that Taryn has finished his chai tea. Karen has got a few more messages. We hope that you enjoyed this video and we hope you enjoy playing. And remember that this project is soon to launch on Kickstarter at the time that we film this. So it will be live through December 2018. And you can check it out there if you're interested. If you have any comments, feedback, questions, just want to say hi to us, please write in the comments below. We'd like to hear from you. And if you'd like to be among the first to see what's new from Meeple University, you can click on the Meeple in the corner to subscribe to our channel.